Unit 11, Wildlife Conservation, Chapter 1, The Race to Rescue Koalas, Page 189. The Race to Rescue Koalas It's two in the morning, and a koala is caught in a fence. Megan Eichen, who runs a volunteer organization that rescues wild koalas, looks at the frightened animal and pulls on heavy leather gloves. Despite their cute, stuffed animal appearance, koalas can be ferocious when caught. Eichen places a wire cage on the ground and opens up a thick blanket. Then she and two other rescuers quickly get to work. One volunteer throws the blanket over the animal, both to calm it and to protect the rescuers from its teeth and claws. The other opens the lid of the cage. Eichen then firmly grasps the koala through the blanket, frees it from the fence, and puts it in the cage. If this koala were sick or injured, they would take it to the Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital. But the animal is healthy. They must release it somewhere nearby, since koalas have a home range and feed in the same trees over and over. They take the animal to a nearby park that borders an area of open land. They set the cage down, open its door, and the koala runs up a tree and disappears. Good luck, little one, Eichen says. But it will take a lot more than luck. The koala, symbol of Australia and one of the most beloved animals on the planet, is in crisis. Before Europeans settled in Australia more than two centuries ago, about 10 million koalas lived in the East Coast eucalyptus forests. Hunted for their fur, koalas nearly became extinct in the southern half of their territory. In the northern half, a million were killed in 1919 alone. By 1927, only tens of thousands remained. Koala numbers slowly rose through the next half century, in part due to a nationwide hunting ban in the 1930s and government efforts to relocate them. Then urbanization began to take its toll. Habitat was lost and diseases spread. With urbanization came the threat of domestic dogs and busy highways. Since 1990, when about 430,000 koalas inhabited Australia, their numbers have plummeted. Current population estimates vary from a low of 44,000 to a high of 300,000. Koalas are getting caught in fences and dying, being killed by dogs, struck by vehicles, even dying simply because a homeowner cut down several eucalyptus trees in his backyard, says Deidre de Villiers one of the chief koala researchers at the Queensland Department of Environment and Resource Management. For 15 years, de Villiers has been monitoring koala populations, studying the reasons for their decline, and creating guidelines to make development more koala-friendly. De Villiers insists that koalas and humans can